Hey folks, do you long for economic freedom so that you can have more control over your time? Time to spend with your family and your friends, time to volunteer and serve others, time to travel. We all want that in life, but most of us work for the man all of our lives, and if we're lucky, we put enough money away to retire by 65 so that we can then do the things that we dreamed of when we're old. But some of us don't even make it to 65, and for those of us who do, we either don't have the health, we don't have the energy, or our finances are too limited to really enjoy life. Look, when I talk to young people, I tell them, unless, you, unless your heart is set on a specific career like medicine or law, et cetera, to start with entrepreneurship, at this point in their lives, they have nothing to lose financially, and they have the energy and to work the long, hard hours. And if it doesn't work out, they can always get a J-O-B. Today, I'm talking with an amazing entrepreneur who did just that. Right out of college, he went for it. He knew that he knew the life he wanted to create, and he did it. He is Michael Van Steenkis. Yes, we're related. Mike's my nephew, and Mike is a man whom I deeply admire, and he's living the American entrepreneurial dream. Mike's roots are in land investing, but he's also been extremely successful in home security, internet marketing, land development, Airbnb, just to name a few. He lives in paradise on the Snake River in eastern Idaho with his awesome five children and his amazing wife, and even though Mike could retire at the age of 40, he continues to work on projects that he wants to work on with people he wants to work with. He calls his own shots and he creates plenty of flexibility to spend time with family and friends and to volunteer and travel. He's a defensive football coach at Rigby High School where his son will be a senior and they're gunning to repeat as Idaho State champions. Please welcome Mike Van Steen kiss to the Land.MBA podcast. Welcome to the Land.MBA podcast, where we go deep into the business of land investing. Hey folks, uh, welcome to the Land.MBA podcast. This is David Van Steen kissed, and today I'm interviewing Michael Van Steen kissed, my Yes, he's my nephew, we are related. And uh, we are out at um, High Sea Hot Springs in, uh, what's it, close to Ryrie? Yeah, Ryrie, Idaho. Yeah, near Ryrie, Idaho, and it is just a gorgeous place. Uh, we're right down the road from, I'm gonna pub Kelly Canyon, uh, mountain bike and ski resort that Mikey's a partner in. And um, pardon me if I call him Mikey from time to time, I've, 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 I used to change his diapers, so. <laughs> Now he is an amazing entrepreneur that I have uh, so much respect for and look up to a ton. He's had an incredibly successful career, part of which included land investing. He's been involved in uh, e-commerce and uh, a lot of uh, e-marketing, uh, land investing, land development, uh, you name it. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. If, I feel like we've been trying to schedule this for a while, so. I know. It's good to sit down. Good, I know. Good setting and great place. It's been, uh, it's been great. I've been uh, spending a good amount of time up here this summer and messing around and doing a lot of fishing, and, and it's been funny. Very fun, you know. It, it's it's uh, nice to be an entrepreneur where you've got, you just need a phone and an internet connection to run your business from just about anywhere. It's just lovely to have that flexibility. Um, so Mike, you live near here and uh, you've been up here a few years now and you've split time in Hawaii. And uh, gosh, I, I wanna just uh, give the folks uh, a little bit of history and how you got started. And uh, I know, you know, out of college from the, your, um, your um, security business and how you got into real estate and land and how it all evolved. Wow, that's a that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a conversation. You just, I know. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, it's uh, wow. It's I, I think I'm really I love what you guys do. I love the land side. I think land land has been my passion always. Like that's always it's always been about land. Um, it, so it started, I, I was at Arizona State um, do, uh, doing undergrad and I, and I offered to work for a broker for free, a uh, land broker specifically. 
and he um yeah he let me in and and i started tying up deals for him researching tax records um before google maps and before really anything i would go down to the assessor's office i'd print out a big map of, uh, of the section areas with ownership information and i'd get their phone numbers and i'd call every single piece of property um and just bird dog and then when i'd tie up a deal i'd hand it to the broker and say here you go are you interested in doing it at the time um about 2004 5 and 6 it, i mean it was it was nuts i mean it, every deal was making money and he was more of a double escrow flip guy so yeah. he was uh, he would syndicate deals and put people into deals. And so that kind of turned me on to it. Um, but yeah, that's there. And then, um, you know, started started buying and investing in land myself, started kind of following the protocol, what I which I learned from him. So having a good mentor was 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 good, was king. Uh, market fell out, um, decided to do a master's in real estate development. Just because there's dirt doesn't necessarily mean there's value. Uh, you have to actually do something with it. That was that was a novel concept because we were just flipping land in the middle of nowhere um, and without any utilities. And I kind of learned the development side, um, the, learned the different cycles within land, um, the different asset classes. And so getting some formal education was a lot of fun, but ultimately just being a entrepreneur, understanding a niche and, and going, you can do, you can do amazing. But in school, um, started a lead gen company. I guess it was too ADD, too entrepreneurial <laughs> to um, sit down and really listen and dive into the book. So I started a lead generation company selling information. Um, I, st I started a, a, a website early on called Land and Farm Sales. Um, ended up selling that. Um, did, did use the e-marketing. You know. Didn't you sell that to what is now Land and Farm, owned by Land.com? Yeah, exactly. By wow. LootNet, yeah. And wow. it was it was it was early early days. Oh wow! It was just like a, a information purchase, and so it was yeah, it was wild. I mean, had I kept doing that, it could have been really interesting. I was more interested in in find, procuring deals, finding a way that I could get deals sent to me, right? Uh, as opposed to like always trying to go out and find deals, right? Uh, it, the landscape has changed a lot, and I learned a lot. Where um, that's a funny story in and of itself. I don't even know if I told you this one. Mm -mm. Land and farm sales. I was I was finishing up my degree. Um, I wanted to find a, procure a way to. I wanted to find a way to get deals sent to me. So I started uh, landandfarmsales.com, and I had these um, programmers. I, I said I, I want to get all the realtors' information from realtor.com. So back then, before can spam and anything like this, there was an open API, and they took all the data from um, from realtor.com and, and it was 300,000 email addresses. Wow. And so, and these are all realtors. So I, I did a real cool landing page, did a sales letter. And then I got this software that we're out in small town Idaho and I, I actually crashed their server, their internet, their ISP. <laughs> so I, I clicked send, it was sending a big, large, pretty attachment to 300,000 people. And in the course of two days, I made $30,000 in subscriptions. <laughs> no ding, ding, ding. And so everybody's signing up to list their land. And then and then I was like, oh, this is interesting. How so, do I fulfill it? Yeah, <laughs> now what, yeah, exactly. How do I make sure that land sells? So that was a that was a fun, but that was kind of like the, the very start of my uh, online journey was in land too. So everything really that I, I've done is, is based in land. Um, even when, when I was getting my master's degree, they, we had a, you know, uh, Ira Fulton and some of these real big home builders, they'd ask, what do you want to do? I'm like, I want to be a land baron. That's, that's what I want to do. So, uh -huh. um, but anyway, I ended up selling the internet company to another land guy, the, one of the largest landowners in the state. I'm partners with a company down there, um, have a small percentage of their portfolio, uh, lots and lots of raw land. They syndicate, put deals with investors. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of been doing the cash flow thing now. So that's pretty hard. good. Is it just me or is it getting harder and harder to count on a job for our financial security? Who would have ever believed that we would go from the lowest unemployment in 50 years to 40 million people unemployed? Whether you have a great job and want to create a second income or you're recently unemployed, you need to check out Land.MBA, your one-stop shop for land investors. Investing in vacant land is a proven business model that can help you build a reliable and scalable second income. Imagine a business where you love what you do. There's no limit on how much money you can make. 
You can operate your business from anywhere in the world with an internet connection. And best of all, you can never be fired or downsized. If this sounds good to you, Land.MBA provides everything you need to get your business up and running and delivering income quickly. You get education, an end-to-end -end video course and optional coaching to help you get started faster and turn your energy into income. You get tools so you can automate and outsource the busy work and stay super organized. You get access to a thriving community of like-minded investors, which is a powerful way to share best practices and develop potential partnerships for growing your business. And finally, you get access to deal financing, so you never have to pass on a great investment opportunity due to limited funds. Our team has over a decade of real estate investing experience and has the knowledge and experience you need to help navigate any investing scenario. And with Land.MBA, we hold nothing back. Because there are no upsells, you get access to all of our combined knowledge right out of the gate. So don't wait to provide your family with financial freedom. Sign up today for Land.MBA's Soup to Nuts Land Investing Video Course. Just go to courses.land.mba and use coupon code FREEDOM to get 25% off. That's courses.land.mba and coupon code FREEDOM. And let us help you say goodbye to your J-O-B and hello to financial freedom. To back up a minute, what enabled you to be able to go and work for free? Because I know you were married at that time, and did sure. you have your first child yet? Did you have Peyton yet? Uh, yeah, I had it. Yep, I had it. Okay. So, so I was a, I was in school, so that was kind of like my. I was lucky. I was I was going to school full time, but then went and worked for free for full time. My wife, she's a saint. She's a she was a nurse, so that that kind of allowed. You know, okay. I had done, I done some sales jobs, some door-to-door uh, -door sales in the summertime to save up enough money to go be able to work for free. Mm -hmm. And then she mm -hmm. actually, you know, that was the had home insurance. security stuff. Right? Yeah, the home security. Yep. Awesome, awesome. That's great. That's great. So, you know, to you young people out there, you know, something that I always preach to young people, and so I'm just gonna segue for a second. Not necessarily even just young people, but you know, married couples, if, you, if you're if you aligned in your goals, um, but really especially young, whether you're single or just married, where one can be the breadwinner and you can live frugally and let the other one swing for the fences and, and, and be, go be an entrepreneur. Um, even if you're single, you know, when I was single and young, I had a lot more energy than I do in my 50s and I didn't mind I could live in a trailer and live on top ramen and tuna fish and work 20 hours a week, seven days a week and make it happen. You know, I think people are so concerned about getting the job and they get the job, they get the mortgage, they, they get the loan on the car and, and they're stuck. They're stuck in a job and then they get married and, and, and it's really difficult once you've got a family to yeah. let go of that security. Mike, it sounds like, you know, you at least had the, enough security that you'd save some money and 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 Sarah had uh, steady income and health insurance and stuff like that. So that enabled you to kind of swing for the fences as so yeah, to speak. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she yeah, everything has to do with my my wife and her ability our, our goals being combined mm -hmm. and she knew what, you know, she supported me in that. And and ultimately like early on I think it was, you know, Robert Kiyosaki, I loved loved his stuff. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I was reading these books when I was 15, 16, 17. Oh, man. Um, Good for you. Yeah, just, and that, that I think ultimately shaped my philosophy. And it was more of a, um, how can my passive income exceed my expenses, period. period. So that's it. It didn't matter really what I was doing. I fell in love with land, but it was time for me. And how could I have that time to be able to spend with my family and, and use it how I want? So passive, and, and ironically, I feel like we're closer. Cause you can do, you know, you could be on any end of the spectrum. You could lever up and have a hundred million dollars in debt and make a hundred and one million and, and you know, you're make you're a millionaire, right? But, right, right. Or you could be on the, the, the other side where you're a top ramen and, and, you know, living as frugally as you can. And ironically, both of those sides, like you, you're probably closer to that freedom formula on the, on the top less, ramen and two top right, Yeah, you really are. <laughs> And sometimes you forget that and you'll, 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 you'll get the new car and you'll get a big mortgage and nice house cause you're in the job, but that actually pulls you further away from your goal. If you know, you keep getting debt and going down the, doing the rat race cause you don't have time to, you know, 
pursue what, what's ultimately gonna make you free. Exactly. And you know, going back to Rich Dad Poor Dad, and if you've ever played the, the um, cash flow game, and I'm not trying to promote Rich Dad Poor Dad or anything, but you know, I've, I'm a big fan of Kiyosaki as well in his books and, and have taken some of his courses and uh, have the game if you've played cash flow and you draw the janitor and the other guy draws the doctor, the janitor, it's much easier to get the janitor out of the rat race because he hasn't gotten used to living high in the yeah. hog, drive, driving the expensive Mercedes and, 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 and taking out the million dollar mortgage. Uh, and so it's, it's very interesting. You know, you start small, keep it, keep it simple, grow it, keep your cash flow higher than your expenses and, and gradually grow that. And then once you got a nice big gap, you can start to enjoy life. And I think there's a great principle to delayed gratification mm -hmm. as well. Um, I think it's really tempting, especially you know when you first get that, that big payday, maybe you sell that big pay piece of land, but you're not there yet mm -hmm. to go out and like buy a new car or buy something special. I mean, we gotta, we gotta have some rewards in life, but you know, sure. we gotta, gotta control it also. That's awesome. Now, uh, didn't you though, before you started flipping land uh, or getting into the land business and go back to school, didn't you, uh, right out of college, do the uh, home security business yeah. where you were you were doing it as an employee in the summers, and, the, and then you and your your brother in law started uh, started a business yep. there right out of college. Tell tell us about that that experience and how that shaped your. Oh uh, yeah, we were 21, path. 22, and um, successful at selling, and um, we. Uh, decided to start our own company. We we hired, I don't know, there's probably a hundred kids, hundred college kids to go sell door to door and uh, very successful in our first year. I think our first year we did about $4 million in, in, in revenue. Um, and That's then the, amazing. And just, yeah, selling contracts to ADT basically. And then the next year, I think we did like 15 million um, and really, uh, really was a cash cow. And, but it was all hustle, you know, it was our ability to go knock doors and, um, you know, really just go sell. So I think um, learning my that sales principle that that helped me in everything. Mm -hmm. Learning how to sell um, that that has been acquired multiple times now with Jared, who's been super successful. Um, I decided to go get my master's degree and kind of do real estate, um, and so it was bought out of that. But it was that shaped specifically from the sales component and uh, learning business and negotiation. Negotiation, yeah, yeah it was great. Sure. So Mike, you know, one of the things that I've always admired about you as well, you have this amazing family, five kids and um, a wonderful wife. And uh, yet you're, you've always like, I don't know your net worth, but I think you could probably retire if you wanted to, but you're too young and you're, <laughs> you have fun doing business. So I know you did, you, you also then had your e-commerce business after the real estate mm -hmm. and after the, the home security. And you did a lot of, um, a lot with that. Tell us a little bit about that, but I want, I want to hear a little bit like about your challenges with raising five kids and oh. you know how you guys have done it. Whew, that's a, <laughs> I feel like they're raising us, but <laughs> it's been, it's been great. Um, it's really, it's kind of back to the time thing. I just didn't want um, ever, I always wanted to have the ability to, to raise them and, and go to the, be at their ball games. <clears throat> I think early on when we were involved in the, in the traveling and the security stuff, I, I missed uh, my son, Peyton was one, two, and three, and I just didn't spend a lot of time with him. I was so busy traveling, and it and it affected me a lot. And so I changed. I wanted to have something that I could I could be around and, and make sure that I was there for him. So I think that dictates really everything. I mean, their their games, their that's first priority for me. And so mm -hmm. uh, being open with them and spending time. I think I spend too much time with them, but. <laughs> it's working but it's, but it's working they uh and and i think one of the things that transitioned to so i started doing the e-commerce <clears throat> side and that was great because i could be at home just very very simple but i didn't have that quality time at home with them mm -hmm. so i i just made it a point to do things i do make it a point to have specific outings with the kids um but 
yeah, the e-commerce was, was great and it let me, gave me the flexibility to stay at home and do what I wanted to do. Um, but it's, it, it's been a challenge. What's been really fun now though is, um, I've, I'm, I'm at a position where I've been investing in, I, I call them lifestyle assets. Mm -hmm. And so that's been fun because I can bring them with me and it doesn't feel like dad's working. So recently we just uh, purchased a Kelly Canyon ski resort, have a bike park and snowboarding and the kids are with dad and we're kind of checking things out, seeing how it goes. I've been doing a lot of Airbnb um, cabins and uh, house in Hawaii and different things. And so they don't, they don't understand that that's income when we're, when we're staying there or it's paid for by tenants and stuff, but we're, you know, getting the benefit. So I, I, that's been really fun from the kid standpoint. So that's awesome. Yeah. Just like a lifestyle asset. Uh, that's awesome. And, and when, when you, when you started buying these lifestyle assets, did it just kind of happen and you go, Oh yeah, this is great. Cause the kids enjoy it. So it's a lifestyle asset or did, so did you find it because it was lucrative first or were you, was, did that become a plan yeah. to say, I want to find lifestyle assets that I can enjoy with my family and, and you pay know, the bills. Yeah. And we've done a, I've done a lot. I've done mobile home parks, storage units, class A apartments, land. I mean, I've pretty, I've done it all. And this definitely was sold the, uh, e-commerce business and was wanting to retire, basically take a break. So bought, bought a place on the North shore of Oahu and wanted to surf and and then as our kids, we started going, we're back and forth between Idaho. As our kids were involved in sports and their friends, we just, it, it kind of, I kind of lucked into it a little bit and, and realized I knew from sales that you have to control and dominate a niche to be successful, especially online. That pro, that's probably what more than anything. You can't, everybody, if you just want to go sell, sell diet pills online, that's a bad, I mean, I granted some people do it, but you want to sell diet pills to, uh, people that are pre-diabetic that are 60 plus that very you know, specific niches. drive Ferraris. <laughs> That's what you want to sell. I mean, yeah, very, very, very specific. So find the blue ocean within the red ocean. Have to, that's the only way to find, find success online. So when you're doing your lead gen or finding your properties, you want to, and that's how you're successful. You find a County property specific, size specific, price specific, and get really that, you know, you've got buyers. That's for. exactly right. Yeah. I lucked into this in Hawaii because our house is, is on an acre and a half overlooking Waimea Bay, but it sleeps, you know, 30 people. <laughs> so nobody, there's not another house like that. Everything's, it's like cookie cutter on the beach, 6,000 square foot lots. And this is on an acre and a half. So, um, I kind of lucked into it. A uh, Lululemon was contacting me and they wanted to have a retreat, a company retreat. And, I said, no, nah, I'm not interested in renting her house. And they said, well, just name a price. We want to do a 10 day retreat. I said, well, okay, it's going to cost you 30 grand, you know, for the 10 days. And they didn't blink. They said, okay. So you're like, hmm, yeah, light go, hmm. bulb. Interesting. <laughs> and that was your start in that was Airbnb. My start, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that was my start. Cause I'm like, awesome. wait a second. Uh, that's, that's good. <laughs> 10 days. So, so I started looking into that niche of, of bigger groups, weddings, during facility, there's a high barrier to entry because the properties are so expensive. Right. Um, and you were able to use creative financing and get the seller to, to yeah, finance every deal. Yeah, we, every deal. That was still kind of where, what, 2014 we're coming out of or before that? Yeah, 2014. We're, com we're, we're, yeah, we're coming out of the, the downturn, yeah. but um, things hadn't really it was, yeah, boomed yet. And I think that's pro I don't know if that's uh, my, like Robert Allen, nothing down for the 90s books. <laughs> Right, <laughs> something, right. something in 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 my early days of real estate and the books I read is always creative, always creative. I mean, I got a deal in escrow right now. It's it's completely creative. It's mixed financing, and I mean, it, I it, every single deal, even a luxury home, you know, expensive home on the North Shore, had creative financing. Where I met the owner, he was a, had a patent on the steel scuba tank from Santa Barbara, you know tons of money. I'm like, well, that guy, that guy could finance me. <laughs> yeah. So we, we worked a deal. And then, and then of course rates got so good, you know, from 14 to even now that you just, yeah, I just refinanced it. it with the bank. So, yeah, yeah. but, but you know, and, and, and my, and you know, I think one of the things that I learned from my master's program too, is I had these very wealthy guys that see, that have seen RTC days in Arizona, you know, Arizona, they've seen all of all, uh, market cycles. And they just said, don't ever take out more than 60% of 
loan to value. Yeah. And sell some cushion. there's there's your twenty five thousand dollar masters. <laughs> yeah. And it, it seems silly, but um, I've learned I've lived by that, and even even less. Um, you with COVID and stuff and vacation rentals. That's kind of been the very first threat to the model that I've seen. Yeah. Um, but luckily, I, everything that you well, you hope, yeah. I guess you you've experienced been, some yeah. some hardship in Hawaii, yeah. but. But it's the fine. stuff here in Idaho, you're okay. Yeah. Because you're not overly leveraged. I'm not leveraged, yeah. And, and a lot of guys will lever up. I mean, that's the name of the game. Yeah. You know, more power to you if that's the way you can do it. I just haven't been, um, that's just not my style. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I tend to hold things for a long time and we'll, we'll ride it out. And so it, that's hard starting out. That is definitely hard. Yeah. But if you, if you were to make a goal to buy 10 rental homes and you're going to, you're going to save up you know, for a 30% or even 40% down payment and rinse and repeat for the next 15 years, you probably could do it. You're not gonna, you know, you probably won't do it as fast, but you're gonna be safe and you're not gonna lose. So there's a lot of people, you know, during that downturn in Arizona, a lot, good friends. I mean, I saw I saw a lot of things that are pretty, pretty sad um, during that downswing. So- yeah, People getting overly leveraged. Overly yeah. leveraged and yeah, it was scary. I mean, yeah. Yeah, so. I heard that those were crazy times, and you know we're we're we've got some similar things happening right now, yeah. and uh, it's interesting. You know, uh, we're 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 seeing land selling like crazy though, because people yeah. want rural. There's a there's a hit, huge push to get out of the cities and get rural. You know, with technology now, I mean, we've got internet access up here, and it's we're pretty remote, and um, uh, you know. People now that people have been forced to work at home, corporations are rethinking their models, and it's like you know More they're productive. like, well, we we don't have to have all this office space, um, and some do. I mean, I think in many companies you're going to see uh, where remote working is available. You'll see partial remote working because I just remember from being on different teams at different companies. I could see working, you know, three days a week remotely, but there's times when you got to get in person. Mm. So, but you know, Hey, if, if, if I only have to come into work, if I only got to commute two days a week, I'll live an hour and a half mm. out of town. Right. You know, even if I'm still renting an apartment, I'm going to pay a thousand an hour and a half away where, you know, if you're in San Francisco and you're renting an apartment to be close to your office, you're paying three grand for a one bedroom or a studio where you could move an hour and a half out and you're paying a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars. So anyway, I, I kind of uh, got, oh, give me your, throw your password in there. <laughs> My notes are on his phone. Uh, awesome. Okay, we're back. So Mike, um, kind of a two part question here. Uh, what? No, actually, I got three questions for you. I want to <laughs> handle this one first here. You know, I, I've, I've always known you to be a God-fearing man and committed to your faith and really committed to your family. How how has your faith carried you through? Because, you know, it sounds like you've had this fairy tale life, but nobody has a purely fairy tale life. There's challenges and, and hard times that everybody goes through. And I know you've had your, your share, but how's your faith carried you through the hard times? Um. That's a great question. I think um, it's it's really been everything. I mean, it, there's no no question, no doubt about it. I mean, having having this you know a marriage where your wife helps you that's that, that's big. But ultimately, with God, I, I know that will be taken care of. And um, and fear is the antithesis of faith. Yeah. And so, I, there's so many entrepreneurs and people that are just scared to make that jump. And I'm, I'm like swing, man, swing for the fences because ultimately it, it really never works out the way you think. But if you can, Obstacle is the Way, Ryan Holiday, I mean, great book, but if you can realize that that is just a stepping stone to what your next move is and, and, and view it like that and have faith that that's the case. So if it doesn't work out, um, you're gonna learn something, glean some information and it, 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 ultimately knowing that God's in charge and that things are gonna happen the way they're supposed to. 
Hey folks, my name is David Van Steenkist and I've been a real estate investor for over 10 years. I've used lots of different tools, but none of them has done for my business what Landspeed does. Landspeed covers every step in the land investing process from ordering mailing lists to marketing sales and closing the deal. What I really like though is it anticipates my needs. When I think Oh, I wish I had a quick and easy way to evaluate return on investment on a potential property. Look no further, Landspeed does it. If I want to edit a deed after Landspeed creates it, it can do that too. Most systems just stick you with a PDF that's uneditable and you got to go back into the system and edit the fields and do whatever you need to do and it's a real pain in the rear end. Landspeed simplifies it. If I want to send one or five or even 40 neighbor letters at the click of a button, bam, Landspeed does it. Um, but even with all that inherent capability, you get access to Landspeed community, you get weekly mastermind calls, and you get the best mailing rates in the business with no volume commitment, which is freaking awesome. Because if I just want to op one contract to somebody, I don't have to pay a buck and a half. I still pay the bargain basement rate. And on top of that, customer service is stellar, quick and they just do a great job. I've been very, very happy, very pleased with it. Uh, and look, I've been running my business on land speed for over two years. So take it from me. If you're serious about your land business, then check out land speed at facebook.com slash land biz automation. That's land B I Z automation. And if you want a hundred bucks off, Tell them you heard it from me, David Van Steenkist, on the Land.MBA podcast. I also believe that uh, of being a good steward of what God's given you. And when you have that mentality, it's really not ours. <laughs> we can't take it. So uh, it's, it's be as generous as you possibly can with what you have. And then I, and I believe he, he in turn blesses you. And it's always been the case with us. Yeah. I mean, I've had times where... Um, yeah, so many different stories where our back's up against the wall and I, I'm just, I don't know what we're going to do and it works out. Yeah. It always does. And my faith is that it will work out. If it doesn't, then it... it something it, else will work out. Something else will. It always does. I mean, yeah. I can't even tell you how many times we've been down. And But but it's within a, a framework. I believe like you can find it in the Bible. You, you can find this framework if you go search for it. And God will teach you through the pages what that framework is. Yeah. And it's... It's there. You just have you have to follow it. There's there's certain principles. You know, uh, richest man in Babylon comes to mind as as a as a book where there's 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 certain principles that you can you have to obey those. Like God is not a, a lawless person. Uh, you know, I think God he, there's rules and you have to follow within confines. Right. Um, there's and, principles. Yeah, and right. and I think that's ultimately. I just completely and utterly have faith in in a God that loves me and 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 ultimately will take care of us. Oh. Yeah, I love I love the part about you know generosity and and then I think generosity and te and integrity are two of the biggest principles that we have to carry forward. Like, yeah, you know you're you're in a deal, you know, and maybe you've got a situation where um, you may be forced. You may in a situation where, where you're going to lose some money, or in order to avoid losing money, you got to sacrifice your integrity. Mm -hmm. There, there's no blessing on the other side of that. No. There's no blessing on the other side of that. And and, and generosity, you know, I, I think we've always had, um, my wife and I have always had the, the philosophy that we've never been able to outgive God. Mm -hmm. He just, our needs somehow get met even when it looks bleak, yeah. you know, and just keep being generous. And, and you have that tendency when you're not, um, uh, when things are tight to, yeah. to not be generous, you yeah. know, to, to, to like, hold on to things well and you and you and you fully reap what you sow I mean, exactly. that's another that's another principle it's like you you, you get out what you put into it mm -hmm. and where energy goes fo or focus goes energy flows so like if you if you you know if, if it's relationships that you need if it's it's more faith in god then put more faith in god like put your energy there right. if you need more relationships or you need um you want more money give more money it's it's very it's very very simple yeah. at least in my mind and if you don't have money give of your time you give your time yeah do yeah. do what you need to do be be gracious and it, it comes back tenfold serve, serve it always does i love it i love it um so other than giving um what advice do you have for 
you know, current entrepreneurs and would-be entrepreneurs, perhaps those who are in a, their backs up against the wall right now, or they're they're struggling, they're they're not growing, uh, and they're getting close to quitting, mm -hmm. which. I always like to talk about the story in, in Napoleon Hill's uh, Think and Grow Rich called Three Feet from Gold, right? Mm -hmm. You know, quitting too soon. But what advice do you have for, you know, both young starting entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs that maybe are, have been at it a little while and are struggling? Um, great question. I, or, I, I guess the advice that I would have is um, doubt your doubts <laughs> and what I mean by that is question your assumptions because there's, and be creative. So uh, let me give you an example of that. I believed, and this is a great land example, but I believed that there is a there's, there's, there's a world that exists where money can be created out of thin air. I hear so many times it takes money to make money. And, and so what I, what I mean by that, so, so challenge your assumptions. If you're an entrepreneur and your backs up against the wall, what are those things that you're missing that, that, that you think, well, you have to have money to make money. That's probably a good example. I need, I hear so many entrepreneurs and pitch decks coming to you, I need this much money to do this. I'm like, well, actually you don't. You need to be creative. Exactly. You need to be creative and, and question those assumptions. So you're assuming that you need money. That's not necessarily the case. Figure out another way. And so my, I believe that there's a world out there where you can make money without money. Because mm -hmm. I've seen it firsthand. Uh, yeah, we've both done it. We've both done it. Um, I backs up against the wall in college, got $5,000 in my bank account. I'm working for this guy for free, researching tax records, take a, a deal to a broker. It's a hundred acres in Maricopa, Arizona. He doesn't want to buy it. It's for a hundred thousand dollars. So a thousand dollars an acre out of a couple out of California. I said, let me try to sell this deal. I have 5,000 in my bank account. I use 2,500 to tie it up in escrow, put the deal in escrow. And I put maps under my arms and go knock doors. I knock doors specifically based on my research, knowing that there's, you know, I, I can sell this property. I bought, I knocked the door of a guy in Scottsdale that owns a tree farm and owns property right next door. Big rich guy, come in with my maps, cold call, you knock his door. Hey, Bill, I need, I have a property that you, I think you're interested in. He says, yeah, I, I'm interested in it. I show him, he says, how much do you want? He said, I want 3,300 an acre. And he goes, Okay, that's a little steep, but I'll, what about three thousand an acre? And this is all across his so on his on his coffee table. I said I'll take it, and he said, "Well, let, let me let me guess. I need to I need cash, and I need to close in two weeks." And I had you know maybe a three week uh, due diligence, and I said, "Yep, exactly." He's like, "Well, don't kid, is this your first deal?" And I was honest. I didn't wasn't pretending like I was somebody I'm not. I said, "Yeah, it's my first deal," and he's like, "Okay, don't forget me when you're rich." <laughs> <laughs> I so, love it. I so love it. college kid, literally at ASU, trying to do my thing, no money. He closes in two weeks cash. I two hundred thousand dollars appears out of thin air, and that's but, life changing. Life changing, right? That, life I can I can probably point back to that time and say, well, that changed everything. I walk home with this check, and I, I don't even know how to tell my wife. I'm just like, <laughs> oh my gosh, because it actually worked. <laughs> So I, I walk home and I and I and I, I just put it on the table and she's like, What's this? And she looks at it and she starts crying. Like she's pissed at me. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> and what she says is like, it would take me, I don't know, what was it, eight, ten years to make to that amount that. of money, You're save that. And she's like, I can't believe you just did that. And I was like, geez, be happy for us, huh? <laughs> but she knew it was a blessing uh. and she knew that that it was it was it was faith and it was hard work that's the other thing faith without works right you got to go to go to work yeah you got to do everything in your power and you know ultimately you you will find success it's you know it, it's happened to me and it continues to happen yeah and and you know every success is somebody standing on a stack of failures i forget mm -hmm. who coined that phrase but i love it oh. and so it just comes back to the don't quit don't quit. You you get me. You, you got to tweak. You got to adjust. But don't quit. And 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 it is so true. You know. I, I still. We both do today. We do deals that you know. Hey, if we can preserve preserve our cash or not ris risk our cash, and we can get creative. Um, hey, you tell me about them today. I mean, like the deals that guys want you to partner and sell and different things. If yeah, that you, know, they, they, you don't want to pay the price they're willing to sell for. Um, Exactly. But I, I think also 
back to the advice to entrepreneurs, and you, you're a good example of this because you do a lot of things that people don't want to do. You do the hard things. You show up and you work. That's why you're successful. The, the, there's a lot of guys on the fence. They've got their job. They've got cush, and they're just kind of dabbling, and they don't want to do the work that it takes what's necessary. Three feet from gold, that's exactly what it is. They're not fully invested putting in the work and the time to make it happen. Yeah. Because, I mean, if I said, you know, you had a deal and, and I said, well, hit the phones and cold call every realtor in that county, would you do it? <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. If that's the... If that's what it takes. That's yeah. what it takes. And some know? people are just like, well, I, I just put it online. It's not selling. Well, what, do you, what do you mean? Get your ass to work. I'm sorry. Yeah. Bl- no, sorry. Edit that out. <laughs> I'm a good Mormon boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, that's great. That's awesome. Well, very cool. Mike, thanks for being on the show today. And, uh, Hey, thanks for, for hosting me at your home for the last few days. I've really enjoyed it. Been getting to spend some good time with your family and, uh, and it's been a couple of years since I've seen everybody and I'm sure our audience is going to benefit from some of the nuggets you've had to share today. And, uh, yeah, any, anything, any, any, any last words, uh, for you? No, it just, uh, I, I'm, I'm super proud of what these guys are doing with Dave. I'm like really, really intrigued. I love what they're doing and I think it's, uh, it's great. I mean, ultimately it all, everything comes back to land. So it truly does. So, uh, just keep on keeping on. Very good. Very good. Well, uh, Howard, we missed you today. This, uh, was uh, my first solo one, but I had to, uh, take advantage of, of having this stellar entrepreneur here in my presence and, uh, uh, so that does it for, for this episode of the land.mba podcast. We wish you all the best. God bless and, uh, talk soon. We hope you enjoyed this episode, had a bit of fun and walked away with some actionable insights that you can apply to your business. Dave and I have got some great content and interviews planned. So don't forget to rate and review. And of course, subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google play, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. If we mention any interesting links or tools, you'll find them in the show notes. To learn more about Land.MBA, visit our website at, wait for it, Land.MBA. See you next time on the Land.MBA podcast.